What's up traders? What up investors? Ken here from the Dyslexic Investor and we're looking at Nikola again. Again, the shares and the overall chart pattern is looking for, again, on my perspective, another potential short building up where we have currently no position in it. And again, to be 100% clear, we're not betting on the company to go to zero, even though there are so many haters out there on this company and saying that it doesn't uh, even have a working prototype. It's saying this truck's going to come out in 2022 and all these other, they're building ATV, they're building a wave runner, they're building... Uh, multiple different semi trucks and how are they all going to do this i'm going to let other people stress about that and worry about that we're just going to be look strictly on the charts and this particular article kind of came from because it was kind of somewhat interesting because i don't know if you remember we did a bit uh earlier this week about jp morgan this analyst uh ryan um who literally has sh told every since multiple three plus years like 67 times saying to, <laughs> to sell out of Tesla, uh, even when it was back at 200, when it was 300 or 400, 500 and so forth. And now it's, of course, Tesla hit well over $1,500 today. It has been absolutely gangbusters. And the same firm, it's not Ryan, but this is a different uh, JP Morgan analyst who is saying there is some pretty uh, large catalyst coming for uh, Nikola Motors. And in the short term, in the intermediate term, we could see some more selling um, when some of the warrants come on um, and actually some of the more uh, volatility kind of slowly kind of peters out um, within Nikola, they're saying. Um, again, despite um, having a this is quotes a story stock which again implies a, a, a the, the hype train as some people will call it uh it, it has a great story it has a great origin story as a it's trying to do the right thing and it's trying to change the world so that's a great story um but then it starts coming down to like how can they execute that and maybe people kind of wake up from the honeymoon stages as i like to call it and it starts trying to figure out exactly how this is going to be able to make it and a lot of hype around the nicholas badgers uh pickup truck directly um again it's i'm not trying to be hating i'm not trying to give it love i'm just trying to be very uh middle of the road and just looking at the charts and the overall price and how i would uh be looking at putting money into this uh stock as you know we did short this before uh it made a, a pretty nice buck but potentially this volatility can continue uh, into next week or even the net following week to see what happens. And we'll look at the charts here in a second. If you want to just go ahead and jump to the charts, I'll put a link uh, down below there for a timestamp. Um, okay, yes, yeah, since the, again, this has had a pretty large run on due to the wake and the overall movement of the EV market. Um, the, the, the stock has literally went up nearly over to $100 kind of came back down, hit like the $40 level and then kind of traded sideways and kind of bounced up a little bit. Um, but being said that some of the th key takeaways that JP Morgan uh, is saying some catalyst for the stock could be is the announcement of an OEM partner for the Badger truck. So again, Nicholas still a very small startup. I wouldn't even call it that small anymore. That is they're valued at like 28 billion or whatever. So it's not really a small startup. They're, they're, they have a lot of money that just need to grow and actually build a lot of the stuff they're saying now. So the demand behind the OEM partnership for the Badger truck is to try to manufacture or try to partner with a manufacturer to help them develop it and produce this truck by masses. And then it's the uh, hydrogen station uh, development plan in the UK. Again, these are all this this particular announcement right here is supposed to happen at Nikola World, which is happening, I believe, sometime in December. Um, so that's quite a far ways out. And same with this hydrogen station plan for the UK. That's kind of, uh, I haven't heard too much about it, so I don't know if that's going to really considered a catalyst. And, of course, the adoption of a lot of these new uh, fuel cell trucks in the United States. So this really has to... I um, wouldn't say they're really bucking the trend. They really need to get mass adoption um, to have these people, uh, uh, the truck drivers, the trucking companies, and things like that really get behind and sell it to them that this is actually better than what they are currently doing, even though there's a pretty substantial cost to these newer machines. Again, 
like we said, they're riding the, the wave, they're riding the hype train, all surrounding this overall electric market. You see Tesla, you see Tesla, you see NIO, you see Workhorse, and all these other uh, various EV uh, alternative fuel cell uh, companies are just trying to push the envelope and make the, uh, a new change, a new trend in the way we think about transportation. And also too, there hasn't been too much uh, understanding for what I see on how much uh, people did deposit and do the reservations for the Badger. Um, so uh, it, it, it's kind of like, I, I, I don't know, like uh, Tesla was pretty upfront on what uh, they did. Like Tesla had a whole demo. Like if you remember that uh, the, they smashed two windows <laughs> on, a, on the car and they sold still 200 i think that as of right now there's like well over 600,000 reservations for the uh, cyber truck and i think we would love to see some numbers from the badger without a doubt to not can compare it because again it's a much smaller company and there really hasn't been too much of a uh, a following of this company yet so there hasn't been this is like one of their flagship products for the consumer um, so that being said, these are just kind of some headwinds that I'm going to be looking at and some things that JP Morgan thinks that could kind of change the, uh, I think what they're trying to say is potentially in Nikola world in like November, December, that means some momentum and kind of go higher from there. But in the meantime, it's just going to be trading volatile and just trading sideways. So let's go ahead and look at this chart here. Um, so you can see here, this is on a daily chart. We've had this huge run up here. Uh, gapping up ginormous on one given day, hitting a high on open uh, hours trading around $94, then kind of selling off a little bit, kind of still trading between the 5 and 8 exponential moving average on the daily side, then it starts uh, getting really tightly in together here between the 5 and 8 exponential moving average, and then it starts kind of failing here. So this is kind of where we got into the stock uh, when it starts breaking below these lines, and it really kind of got, we got into it and then got out of it around like $52. Uh, we sold some puts on it, or we bought some puts, sorry, uh, out. Uh, and then those actually were very good trades. Uh, didn't hold it to the full execution. Didn't know the 50 days really have to kind of come in for support here. Kind of came into the 50 day, really bounced here. Uh, wouldn't call it a dead cap bounce because a dead cap bounce would imply where it hits at least 50% retracement. But we can kind of do a quick fib here because you can see I have a potential alert here at $66.69. That is looking for, again, where the 50% retracement is uh, potentially where it could bounce and then fail. Uh, we really saw the kind of come up, bounce, and kind of failed at the 38.2 percentile move. And again, it did still close below the 21, um, and the 5 and 8 are still below the 21 as well. Uh, and the 34 is kind of coming in some somewhat support here. Let's go ahead and get that away, and then we're going to be looking at the 4-hour chart to kind of give us some more details. And um, This is actually what triggered the uh, initial short here. So on the 4-hour chart, it actually looks fairly good because you start seeing the 5 and 8 start crossing over to the 21. It doesn't look pretty. It doesn't look sexy, but it uh, definitely looks... Uh, fantastic or not fantastic looks fine in the sense of it could potentially just trade sideways because you do have the parabolic SAR on the bottom of it you do have the 5 and 8 above the 21 but you're still below the 50 and the 34 on the 4 hour chart again looking here on the 4 hour chart to be 100% clear Volume zone oscillator is basically blank. RSI is kind of blank as well. Um, we can kind of see that uh, that V-shaped recovery here, kind of a bounce here. Uh, and then if we go back to those FIB retracements, we can really see it in a much more detailed uh, pattern here. You can really see that here, basically not completely hitting that $62 level, which we initially could th would have thought of that failing, but it's kind of grinding lower with the 34 exponential moving average. Again, this could be a, a wedge pattern. This will be kind of different things to look out for. So we can draw some imaginary lines. I know if uh, Brian's watching, him and I develop this new plan on making magical enchanted lines. So we're gonna make this one, um, what color should we make it? We're gonna make it pink, pink or purple, whatever color that is, I can't. And we're gonna make it pretty thick. So it needs some momentum to really break through that. And then on top of that, we're gonna just kind of make this uh, another wedge pattern here to really see on what happens. So we're gonna make this one, one, we're gonna make this one bluish. Actually, now it's gonna confuse me if I do that color. 
Let me see if I can find that same color. That's a little bit too dark, but that's fine. That's then we're gonna make it. That's gonna make this one thick. Boom. In the, the in thinking, this is kind of like a crisscross pattern. Looking for this continue to trade sideways and potentially break out between one of these levels. If it starts breaking out, there isn't any squeezes indicating here, but it looks like it could easily break out and come to the 50 day to the $60 level. Again, we want it to kind of break above that to potentially see only if it can get up to the $67 limit there that we have for a potential uh, looking at engaging it and reevaluating it at that level to see if it is a potential short candidate or it can just continue to run again I, I don't this is not an opinion I'm just looking at the charts and I'm just evaluating a trade from that um, this is very interesting again the stock has had a lot of love a lot of hate so the, the volatility the only thing I can really agree on JP Morgan is there's volatility gonna still continue um, with the stock without a doubt so that being said uh, we can look again to the finally the daily chart here Kind of sums things up a little bit. I know it looks somewhat messy, but again, looking for that 50% retracement. The one thing I want to do quickly as well is the uh, the previous swing high. So this is another Fibonacci extension. Previous swing high to swing low and then high again. Okay, that didn't uh, consolidate where I thought it would be. Let's do let's do it this way. So we're gonna do previous oh, previous. Swing high to low, boom. So you can kind of see here on this is basically mapping out the Fibonacci retracements to the downside. So this is going to be some key parameters on if this fails to the uh, if you want to be more of a bear, this is some pre uh, existing lines that it could have some downward support. Um, the one I'm really looking at is around that $42 to. $40 looking for some consolidation there again that kind of comes in with a 50-day and it's quite astonishing where the 618 to the downside is around 2655 that's pretty close to the $24 $25 limit around where the 200-day exponential moving average falls not saying it's going to go down there but again this is just uh, good to know uh, different various levels of ceilings of resistance or support levels on the way down so we'll see what happens um, um, no trade on there currently yet we want to want to kind of see it prove itself again on the daily chart it's still kind of showing some overhead uh, negative momentum um, with the TTM squeeze here and the volume oscillator looking like it wants to maybe potentially go back down to zero or even go negative uh, there initially again guys I hopefully you learned something about this today and if you have don't forget to hit that like and subscribe I would greatly appreciate it and I hope to see everyone on the live stream tomorrow on Sunday at 9 30 Eastern Standard Time that's p.m. again at night and we're going to be talking some great stocks charts and looking for the week ahead really kicking off earnings season with a lot of the bank stocks and again guys thank you so much for watching this is Ken from the Dyslexic Investor and I'll catch you guys on the flip side peace